Hello everyone, I am Dr. Danish Salim. Today we are going to discuss about Nipah virus myths. After a gap of almost two years, the Nipah virus has been reported again in Koriko district. This is the third time Nipah virus has been reported in Kerala. Coincidentally, Nipah is reported again in Kolikod, the same place which successfully fought and arrested the spread of Nipah outbreak in 2018. At this time, when COVID continues to spread, there is no need to have unnecessary anxiety or alarm about Nipah. Rumors about the Nipah outbreak are spreading faster than the virus itself. Hence, I would like to clarify some misconceptions regarding the same. One question that comes to everyone's mind is, will Nipah spread like COVID? Since we are already following the precautions to prevent COVID infection, like frequently sanitizing the hands, wearing masks, etc., the probability of Nipah spreading widely is low. However, we shouldn't trivialize the existence of this virus. Nipah virus in humans can cause a range of clinical presentations like fever, headache, breathing difficulty, uh, altered sensorium, seizures and behavioral changes. Patients who have these symptoms should get tested for Nipah, especially people near, the, near to the place where Nipah cases have been reported. They should be extremely cautious and should definitely get tested in case of these symptoms. In case someone tested negative for COVID but the above stated symptoms persist, they should get tested for Nipah as well. Such patients should follow the same quarantine protocol as for COVID patients. Another question that is circulating is whether Nipah is an artificial virus made by humans in a lab. No, Nipah virus is already present. It is classified under Henipa virus. It's a bad bone virus that can cause infection in humans and mainly in animals. This virus is most commonly transmitted from infected bats to other animals, especially bats. However, it is a zoonotic virus, meaning although rare, this virus can spread from animals to humans. Once a human gets infected, he or she can transmit the disease to other humans as well. Another myth about Nipah is that it is difficult to diagnose and death is certain in infected patients. It is also wrong. RT-PCR, the real-time polymerase reaction, test of blood, urine or fluids from throat, nose, from cerebrospinal fluid, that is the brain, can help in early detection of Nipah virus. Nipah's case fatality rate is estimated to be 40% to 75%. This rate can vary based on the clinical management and the general health condition of the patient. The treatment of any disease is done in three ways. Symptomatic treatment, definitive treatment, and supportive management. While there is no definitive treatment for the Nipah virus currently, there are very effective means for symptomatic and supportive treatment of this disease. So we have to detect the disease earlier. Another common misnomer is that chicken spreads Nipah virus. Chicken does not spread Nipah virus. It is transmitted by fruit bats. It is perfectly safe to consume well-cooked chicken, eggs, milks, milk and other meat products. Another myth that causes a lot of concern is whether touching pets like dogs, cats can cause Nipah infection. Pets like dogs, cats, cows, etc. are susceptible to Nipah virus if they come in contact with the uh, infected animals or secretions. But there is no scientific evidence that these pet animals can transmit the Nipah virus to humans. However, just to be on the safer side, in case you happen to touch their body fluids, please be sure to wash your hands with soap and water. Next common question that arises at this time is whether it is safe to consume fruits. 
fruits especially those containing vitamin c is very good for your immunity and should be taken especially by patients having fever however since it is fruit bats that transmit the nipah virus please discard any bite or half eaten fruits those which may have fallen down on the ground be sure to thoroughly wash fruits before consuming that's the most important thing so next question is what about well water is it safe to use what if it, it contains fecal matter so government has cautioned people to be careful not to allow fecal remains of bats to fall in any fresh water sources including wells boil water can be safely consumed wells can be chlorinated to cleanse the water to avoid any risk from using that water for bathing washing face etc the final question is is fever with headache a classical sign of nipa while fever and headache are classical signs of nipa not every fever and headache is caused by nipa virus patients suffering from fever headache extreme fatigue cough vomiting altered behavior joint pain seizure to be extremely cautious and to be get tested self treatment should be avoided and medical help should be sought at the earliest remember one thing just like covid one of the best weapon against nipah virus is washing hands frequently with soap and water before having food take 30 to 40 seconds to scrub and wash your hands thoroughly also please make sure to discard used tissue papers and mask also refrain from unhygienic practices like spitting to avoid the spread of nipah virus so there are so many false messages circulating through the social media please share this message to everyone we will come with another good topic soon take care everyone thank you